Hello my loves, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about yoga props and the essential things that you need for a home yoga practice versus things that are just fun. At the end of the day, you don't need any equipment to do yoga, but the props make things more accessible and more comfortable. So let's begin by thinking about a mat. A yoga mat makes things initially way more comfortable. They provide you with a little bit of cushion against the floor when you're lying down. So they're non-stick and they provide you with grip for your feet in the poses. Or your hands and your feet. Now, if you notice, yoga mats are not that thick and they're not that thick for a reason. The big thick mats that are about an inch thick, they are not suitable for yoga and this is why. When you come into balance poses, a thin mat is basically like standing on a floor. A thick one inch mat, that's just asking for more wobbles and instability in your standing leg. That's why your yoga mats are not an inch thick. But what if you're the kind of person that needs some cushion? Because sometimes we need a little bit of comfort. After all, the mats aren't thick get yourself a blanket. So a blanket, a big thick fold of blanket or towel can give you the support that you need. Maybe you have a bony pelvis like I do. They're especially good for giving a little bit of cushion for the knees when you come onto the hands and knees. And you can also fold them for other uses. If you're doing some sideline poses, they give you a little bit of head support or you provide yourself with a little support if the heel needs to be lifted in some poses. And again, if you're at home, you don't have to invest in a blanket. This could just be a big, thick, folded beach towel. One of the major things that I wish most people would invest in is a set of yoga blocks. Seriously, you can get these for around $10 now, worth the money. These do a lot of jobs. They help bring the floor up to you so that you're not left hanging. They can help provide support in balance poses. You can use them for some restorative yoga. You can use them to work the core. There are so many ways to use a block that I could be here all day. They're so versatile and they're well worth the investment. They last forever, almost. Another prop in my top five would be a strap. If you're going to invest into a strap, I would suggest getting one of the long ones rather than the shorter ones. Because these, you can do so much more with the long straps than you can the shorter ones. And if you're going to make the investment, make the investment. Straps can help us in so many ways. If you can't reach the foot, they act as extensions for your hands and then we can do all sorts of releases. They make boat pose super easy. They can help us bring awareness into our joints by using them in some standing poses. This is one of my favorite variations of Warrior Two. They can help us go deeper into our balance poses. They can make some balance poses accessible. Lots of uses for a strap. Rounding out my top five pieces of equipment would be a bolster. If you're looking for relaxation in your yoga, this is what you need. It can change Shavasana dramatically. It can change Shavasana dramatically and I have a video all about that here. If you deal with lower back issues, a bolster will change your yoga practice completely. If you're doing restorative or somatic work, it really helps you get a lot more comfortable. Seriously, if you're doing any kind of restorative yoga, get a bolster. And now for one of the cheapest bits of yoga kit that you can buy, a tennis ball. Might not look very yoga practice to many, but this is great for relieving tension in the feet, in the calves, and basically anywhere. One of my favorites is to use it for the glutes. You seriously don't need to buy fancy massage balls 
all you need is a tennis ball, especially if you're a beginner. But I do also have all of the fancy massage balls. I'm a nerd, what can I say? Okay, so maybe you have your non-stick mat and you're still sticking. Especially in poses like downward facing dog, it can still be a little bit slippy. If you're in a hot climate, like me, it was 105 this weekend, or if you're just a kind of person that just has more sweat, some people sweat more than others, get yourself some yoga socks. What are yoga socks? Yoga socks are ones that have little grippy dots on the bottom. You can get them with or without full toes. My personal preference is for the cut off toes. And then when you come into your poses, your feet are gripping to the floor. Now you can also get these for the hands, little um, gloves, little mitts with the non-stick dots on the palm. If you want the whole mat to be non-stick, maybe look at getting a yoga towel. It is as long as a standard yoga mat, non-stick dots on the bottom, and the top is generally a microfiber, but this really helps to keep any sweat under control. If you had a problem on one area but not the other, Maybe it's just the hands, which is my issue recently because it's so hot here. Then I'll place this just along the front edge of my mat. All right, the next one isn't necessarily a tool. You're going to have to forgive me, but this just takes your Shavasana to the next level. It's a lavender eye bag. You'll place it over your eyes. It blocks out all of the light and makes things heavenly. If you are looking to do yoga nidra, a yoga for sleep, or restorative yoga, or you've just done a hard yoga practice and want to take a good deep shavasana, this is for you. Honestly, I would just get one anyway, even if it's not for yoga. They're amazing. I do recommend keeping it in a little plastic baggie so that it keeps its lavender scent. All right, another tool that I like to use in my practice is a balance pad. Now, as you can see, this is about a two inch thick piece of sturdy foam. So what does a balance pad do? It can make things easier and it can make things harder. It can work the same way as a blanket does. A little more cushion for the knees, for the hands, for some restorative work. However, it can also make things a heck of a lot harder. Now, I know what I said earlier about wanting to not have a thick mat, but once you've got an established yoga practice, challenging your proprioception on a balance pad like this can really challenge your practice. So coming into poses on a balance pad can be a lot more challenging. It's also a great way to wake up those stability muscles that you need to build for your balance poses. It helps you focus. And if you're looking for more of an energetic workout, it engages more muscles. If restorative yoga is your thing, then you may want to look at getting a sandbag. Mine is not full of sand. Mine is actually full of dry peas. They work just as well. So for restorative yoga, this is great for weighing down areas of your body and giving you a little bit of grounding. Could be in the hips. Great for pranayama to draw attention to where the breath is. If you're somebody with anxiety, they're also nice to weigh down to help relieve some stress and anxiety. And you can also use them as resistance for a workout. Great for grounding in restorative. In the bolster category, I would also include the Zafu pillows. If meditation is more your thing, these are great for meditation. You can also use them in other ways. Another tool that is fun to use is a yoga wheel. Especially if you're working on back bends. And sometimes they're just fun. And finally, I want to talk about 
lifts. This is a body lift. So if you want to experience a headstand or a handstand or some kind of inversion, but you don't have the arm strength or the shoulder strength, or you just have some psychological block, these are a great way to come into your inversion. No arm strain, no hand strain, all of the inversion with so much less effort. And plus, you get to play a little more. I seriously love these things. Well worth the investment. So as you can see, there's a lot of yoga equipment, especially at my house. However, you don't need all of these. I recommend, first of all, getting a mat, a blanket, blocks, a strap, and some kind of bolster or your meditation cushion. The rest, well, that comes as your practice progresses. I'm going to leave a link to everything in the description below so that you can check out some options to make your yoga more accessible and more comfortable. Let me know which one of these was new for you or which one seems very fun. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And remember my loves that karma is only a bitch if you are. So be nice, be kind and be the change that you want to see in the world. Because of the diff... Blah, 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 blah. So, so, again, um, keep moving in and out. What's that about? When you come... <laughs> they aren't... If you don't... La, la, la. Focus. To keep them tidy, they do take a while to wrap back up. Let's consider it a moving meditation. Mm, no, never. It's also a great way to work up. Work up? Now you can also get these for the feet. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. I'm out of focus. No, 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 I'm not done the other bit. Oh my god, that's covered in dog.